Hey guys, it's Leanna, and I'm here today to rant about Trader's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. Before I rant about it, it's been a hot minute since I was on here. I keep looking over there because your girl got a DSLR on Black Friday. So I uh, spent most of my morning trying to figure out how to use it and... I don't even know if this is going to work, so I might just be talking to myself right now. Who knows? I had actually recorded a video to go up, like, during the holidays when I knew I would be away and be too busy to film. And then, like, something I said, it was, like, a chatty kind of, like, semi-controversial type topic. And, like, the way I phrased something when I was editing it, I was like, mm, this could be misinterpreted. And I was like, do I just upload it anyway and just, like, put something in the description that's, like, just, like, so you know what I meant was, and I was like, forget it, I'm just not gonna upload it. So it's been, like, two weeks, because that was the one I was gonna upload in between, and then I didn't. So here, welcome. I'm gonna film my wrap-up today, if all this goes well, but I wanted to rant about this first. So this will be in my wrap-up, but I just, like, then I won't have to, like, rant about it there, too. I'll just direct you to watch this video. And I've been wanting to rant about this for, since I read it. So I decided to do that first. So, like, I literally just, like, woke up and started getting ready to film. So I'm having coffee, like, right now. Which is not something I normally do. You normally have breakfast and coffee and stuff and then film. But no time. Um, oh, and side note, this is, um, I talked about it in one of my other videos that I really like Bones Coffee. So I bought their Christmas sampler and... Like, it has a bunch of flavors that I probably wouldn't normally buy. It's weird. I know I keep looking over there. And I've seen other people do this, and now I know why. It's impossible not to look. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna try to look at the camera, but no promises. Was I talking about coffee? Yeah. Um, the bones. Maybe I should talk about this later. Who cares? I'm talking about it now. Um, yeah, a lot of Christmas flavors, like, I wouldn't have bought, but I was like, it's a little sampler. And I was not excited about peppermint mocha. <clears throat> sorry, not peppermint mocha. It's, like, peppermint bark or, like, white chocolate pepper. I don't know. It's peppermint something. And I was like, I don't really like peppermint in coffee, but fine. Like, let's have this, like, pepperminty coffee. And this doesn't even taste like peppermint. So now I'm disappointed, even though I didn't want to taste like peppermint, because I'm like, where's the peppermint? It doesn't taste like peppermint. So fair warning, if you were going to buy it because you really love peppermint, it doesn't taste like peppermint. If you weren't going to buy it because you're afraid of peppermint, it doesn't taste like peppermint. So the more you know. Okay. So the reason that I have gathered you all here today is to talk about Trader's Blade by Sebastian de Castell. This book I heard a lot about and everyone who likes like Lies of Locke Lamora and other like bantery, high fantasy, not necessarily heist, but you know, like the sort of musketeer criminals bantering type of deal. They seem to like this book and I like those kind of books. Again, like Lies of Locke Lamora is one of my all time favorites. So I had been wanting to read this for a while. I had an audible credit and I heard the clip and I was like, this sounds pretty good. So I listened to the audiobook of this. And did I read the same book that everyone else read? Like this has a really high um, aggregate rating on Goodreads. It's like four point something. It's like close to five. And at first I really liked it. I really, really did. The beginning, like I was even telling people that I would talk to about books that I was like, I started reading this book and I really like it. It's really bantery. I think it's gonna be great. And then it just wasn't. Okay, I feel like my camera's not centered. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is gonna be a terrible video because I'm just focused on this like tech stuff. Okay, we're gonna try to move it and I'm gonna ruin everything. It's fine. How's that? I don't know. I feel like it's better. Back to the terrible book. So yeah, um, if you've been wanting to read it too, like I have, I'm here to tell you not to <clears throat> because uh, what the actual fuck. To start out with, it's totally what I thought it was going to be, that it's like criminal bantery type of situation. So basically it's about like this, this group that are called the Great Coats and they served this king that was like dethroned before the, this book starts. And so without the king there, um, like, they are kind of like the musketeers and like, they specifically serve the king. So they're basically like traitors now in the realm because like that traitor or that king was deposed or whatever. So they're going around like just kind of trying to make a living or sell themselves. But everyone like refers to them as traitors and blah, blah, blah. And like everyone hates them. So our main character is Falcio Valmond. And he was like tight with the king. Like he was like the number one great coat dude. And he's got some buddies who were also great coats. So they're like going around the country, being hated by everybody, which is fine. Um, and that's like, it was like a really fun vibe at first. Like they were, 
getting into scrapes, getting out of scrapes, bantering. Um, there's some flashbacks to like how they got to be where they're at and how they learned to fight, and it was great. And the the one the one positive thing I can say about this book is that the fight scenes are really well written. Like if you care about that kind of thing, like if you know anything about hand to hand combat, if you like a lot of that, that there's a lot of that in there. But I don't think it's worth it to read it for that. But that was well done. Probably too much of that in here, but that was well done. Okay, so why is this book so terrible? Oh my god, such major yikes. Okay, to start out with, the reason... Oh yeah, this is gonna be kind of spoilery, but I feel like it doesn't matter because I'm trying to tell you not to read this, so you're not gonna read it, so it doesn't matter if I spoil you. If you still want to read this and you care about spoilers, then I don't know. Don't watch this video. So you get in a flashback the reason that Falcio like became a great code in the first place, and the whole reason he was like a simple farmer peasant dude. And then he, his, like the, some Duke guy or some rich dude came to his farm and was like, have you paid your taxes? He's like, yeah. And he's like, well, you have a wife, so I'm gonna fuck her. And his wife is like, it's fine. Like, don't make a stink. Like, this is awful. But like, let me just fuck these guys and they'll leave and it'll be fine. And then they like fucking her so much. They take her away with them and then Falcio finally gets his shit together and, like, goes after her. And when he gets to where these guys took her, um, they're all dead. She's dead. Maybe they're not dead, but she's definitely dead. She's, like, super dead. Like, full-on, like, blood on the floor, dead. So he's, like, enraged. And he, like, goes off to try to kill anyone, basically. Comes across the king. And the king is, like... Or the guy that is about to be king, who hates his father, because whatever, it's like a long story. But he's like, look, like, if you hate the king, I hate the king. Like, you should, like, team up with me and be, like, my number one dude. I can help you get vengeance. Like, just, like, work for me. Like, I can't bring your wife back, but, you know, be my dude. And he's like, fine. So, fine. Like, I read that and I was, like, not super keen that the whole reason this guy went on his quest to become who he is is because his wife was raped and killed because we have seen this and I'm a little tired of women just being sex objects and then dying just to be like a reason for our main character to do something. So I was like, whatever, like not super happy, but it's fine. Like I've seen it, it's done, whatever. So I was going along reading this book and then the fucking weirdest thing happened and it was just downhill after that. Um, I don't even really know how to explain it because I'm still not really sure what happened. I just, it was super not okay. So he's like on this like little mission thing. Obviously, like not for the king. It's like there's this girl that he gets to protect, like a little kid. And um, they've gotten themselves like locked up in a prison and he's been like tra uh, tortured a bit, but they're like escaping. And this woman, she helps them escape. And she is actually like part of some church where she's not a nun, but she's like a part of the church. And like the way they serve their God is like basically as prostitutes, but like for their God to the point where like they do take money for like, they don't just like say like, I will pleasure you for my God. They also expect to be paid like literal prostitutes. And like the little girl is like, why do you take the money? And they're like, oh, it's because like men feel the need to pay for it. And the little girl is like pretty sure they'd be fine with not paying for it. <laughs> Like, right? But yeah, so she helps them escape, which is fine. And whatever, she can be a prostitute, it's fine. But so she cleans up Falcio, um, because he's, like, been tortured and shit. And then he's like, thanks. And then she starts, like, making moves on him. And he's like, nah, I'm good. And she continues making moves on him. He's like, no, like, for real, no thank you. Please stop. And she's like, you're just afraid of hurting me. You're just afraid of, like, the evil inside you. He's like, okay, well, but no, 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 please no. And she's like, it's fine. And she starts tying him up, like, his wrists and his ankles tied to the bed. And he's like, what's happening right now? And she's like, this way you won't hurt me, so you don't have to be afraid. And he's like, what is happening? And then he is fucking pooped from being tortured and imprisoned. So, like, it's told from his perspective. So he's, like, basically says that he, like, passes out from exhaustion about from being tortured. And it's, like, at some point, because she's grinding on him while he's passing out, at some point, while he's passed out, he's, like, at some point his dick ended up inside of her. He didn't really recall the, how that ended up happening, but it definitely happened. And, like, that was their night. And then he feels better the next day. Like, it healed him. But I was, like, you just got raped. You literally just got raped. And she's like, I'm healing you. It's for your own good. And he's like, okay. <laughs> so the next day, 
to have to discuss payment, because remember, these ladies, they take payment for being prostitutes for their god, and um, he's like, what do I owe you for whatever the fuck that was? She's like, uh, my family owns this island. And he's like, uh, cool story, brah. And she's like, I want you to be with me. I want you to come to that island and be with me. And he's like, I'm kind of like in the middle of a quest right now. Like, you know, this little girl that's with me, like, I'm, we're kind of like in the middle of something. So kind of don't have time right now. Like, I appreciate it. I'm super flattered. But like, I mean, like now, right now, I met you yesterday. And she's like, you're afraid of happiness. I thought that by raping you, she doesn't say raping you. I thought by raping you last night, you'd finally like, learn to be happy and like, give up this life of misery. And now you'd be with me, but I can see you're not ready for happiness. You still, like, hate yourself for what happened to your wife. And he's like, uh, maybe, but, like, also, like, I'm definitely in the middle of a quest right now. So, like, later, like, when I'm done with my quest, can can we then? And she's like, I guess. And he leaves feeling like he let her down. Like, he's, like, mad at himself for letting her down. And I was just like, you got raped. And this woman who met you yesterday is like give up your whole life right now and be with me. And you're saying no, which is totally reasonable. And he's like, man, I should learn to be happy. I was like, what? What? Why? So I was like, super not okay with any of that. But so they move on. And the whole rest of the book, like everything else that I'd kind of been like, eh, meh. Like, I started, like, paying more and more attention to it. And, like, the everything about it started, like, all the wheels started coming off of this wagon. The world building that I was like, I think this is kind of something interesting is happening here. Like, the reveals that happen. I don't even want to go into too much detail because, like, it doesn't even matter. And I have to explain too much. But the reveals are, like, make everything so much worse. Everything is such a huge coincidence. And, like, the women are either, like, prostitutes or there's, like, this old woman who's, like, a hag, or there's, like, the child. So there's no women characters that are just, like, straight-up women. There's, like, evil witch women, like, old crone medicine women, prostitute women, and children. There's no just, like, I don't know. They're, like, horrible portrayals of women just across the board. Like, every version of horrible representation of a woman is in there. And I was just like, okay. And then, like, when... There's, like, so many little things about it that started annoying me because, like, at first I was, like, giving everything a pass because, like, overall this is pretty good. Like, that's a little weird, but it's fine. It's not fine. Everything about it is so stupid upon reflection. Like, I originally gave this, like, three stars because at first I had liked it and then it went downhill. So I was like, that should average out to, like, a three because I was, like, into it and then it was, like, super not into it. So, like, a three. But the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. So I changed it to a one star because I was just like, you know what? Fuck this book. Fuck this book. <laughs> like, there's just, like, so much little stuff that, like, and, and then the author's attitude, it just felt so smug, like, about the world building stuff that I honestly thought was, like, a bit weak. The way it was presented wasn't just like, here's how the world's set up. It's like, isn't this just so clever what I've done? And I'm like, no, it's fucking not. The great coats would go around, like, not just be like soldiers, but like they were like law enforcers. So they would like be judge and jury on like cases and like bring the king's laws to the people. But like, this part is the clever part. They would sing the laws to the people. And if they had a verdict, they would sing the verdict. So all of them had to be good singers. This came up because they would sing. And he's like, we're all such good singers because, you know, this is what we used to do. We had to like sing everything to the people. So they would remember it's because they won't remember the verdict if you don't sing it so they can sing it back. And I was just like, that's kind of really stupid. Like at first when he explained it, I was like, I guess that makes sense. And then later, like, cause it was an audiobook, he was like literally singing this stuff. And like when he's in prison, he starts singing the laws. And I was like, it was kind of like a twist on the whole, like if an, a soldier is captured and he starts reciting his like rank and like number and whatever. It was like a twist on that, except he's like fucking singing some laws. And, like, I was just like, this is so dumb. And then in, like, the big climactic scene, like, all of the reveals... Oh, my God. Okay, I forgot. This also made me so mad. Throughout the book, there's all these, like, people that, like, clearly are, like, more in the know. Like, they kind of know what's up. They've probably, like, put some things in motion. And Falcio's going around, like, fucking shit up, just doing whatever. And they're like, bro, like, you don't... Do you really not realize what's going on here? And he was like, I totally realize what's going on. I know exactly what's going on. And then he would say what was going on, and it was like the other character would be like, you really think that's all this is about? So it's like obvious they know something. Like if they're saying that, they're not going like, oh yeah, you do know. They're like, you really think that's what this is about? And he's like, yes, I know that's what this is about. I was like, what's wrong with you? I was like, at the very least, this person clearly, even if they don't really know something, they seem to think they know something. So 
are you an idiot? Like, if someone was saying that to me, like, you think that's what this is about? My first question would be like, well, okay, so what is this about? Am I, what am I missing? Tell me. He never, ever says that. Like, literally, like, five or six times, some other character is like, can you really think that that's what this is about? Or like, do you really not realize what all's going on here? And he's just like, I know what's going on. Blah, 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 and goes off. And I was just like, what? What? Why wouldn't you ask? At least if he had asked and the characters were like, you'll find out. I'd be like, okay, it's not his fault. Like, they're being cryptic. So fine. He doesn't even ask. I was like, you're a fucking idiot. And then, so finally the reveals are made. They're like, you remember how we <laughs> were constantly saying that's not what this is about? And they like reveal the thing and he's just like, wow, I had no idea. And I was like, yeah, because you're a fucking idiot. Um, and like, I just, <laughs> it was such a a mess. Like, a mess. So, basically, don't read this book. Like, and I really, oh my god, it's seriously such high ratings. And, like, other authors that, like, I respect, like, I saw, like, Mark Lawrence, I think, gave it, like, five stars, and, like, people are just like, oh, such a great book. And I was just like, uh, no. No, 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 no. What the fuck? Like, (laughs) this was terrible. So terrible. And not just like not my cup of tea, just like objectively terrible. So if you want to know how to not write a high fantasy book, (laughs) read Trader's Blade because it shows instead of, or no, sorry, the other way around. It tells instead of shows. The characters are just like symbols. The women are horribly represented. The the, like, everything that's, like, a, supposed to be a twist is really just, like, a massive fucking coincidence. And then, okay, like, okay, this is, like, the biggest twist of the story, but I've already spoiled you for, like, a buttfuck of stuff, so, like, I'm just gonna spoil this, too. So, by now, you, I should have convinced you to not read this. So, so this big, so the king is dead, but, like, before he died, he told his, like, great coats to just, like, surrender. Just, like, don't fight back, just surrender, it's fine, I'll die. And that he's hidden some secret something, secret weapon or whatever around the country. And they're like, what is it? He's like, you're gonna have to find it. And they're like, can you tell us what it is? Because you're go- you're about to die. And he's like, when you're least expecting it, like, you'll find it. And they're just like, fucking fuck. So the king dies. And it turns out this little girl that Falchio just happened to spot when he just happened to be in the city where they just happened to be having this, like, horrible ritualistic massacre, which, oh, by the way, I forgot. This book central to the plot of this book is The Purge. Like, literally The Purge. Like, the movie the purge where there's this city where for and it's not even one night it's like it's for like a nine days where like it's only during the night i think like during the day everything's fine but every night for those nine days like all bets are off you can kill anybody you want and it's like fine i was like this is literally the purge so falcio is protecting this little girl throughout the purge because her family's dead and like his great coats are like we need to get the fuck out of here he's like no this little girl's gonna die if we just leave okay my camera stopped recording i don't know why because i don't know how this camera works so i think where i left off was yeah falchio's gonna protect this little girl because he's like if i don't she's gonna die oh there's a countdown so it lets you record for 20 minutes at a time well that's handy okay i'll just look out for that now okay so where was i yeah so he's gonna protect this little girl and yeah, so he's just, he just happens to like see her and he just happens to now just decide that he's going to protect her, which why it's, I mean, it's fine. Um, and then the big reveal is that the, this Prince King dude that he's so loyal to, he went around just like impregnating a bunch of women because there's like question the whole time about the fact that she like might be a bastard or that like her mom had a lover. And so like Falco keeps saying that like, that he thinks he knows who the lover was and that like that caused like a rift or that like there's some like bad beef between the nobles because of her fling the fling was with his king so this girl is of noble blood she's like an heir to the throne i guess which i was like okay the super that's like honestly really creepy that he just like went around like making babies all over the place that was like his master backup plan and he's painted as being like this like scholarly really wise king that we're all really sad is dead i was like he's super gross okay that's wonderful and then like for real that was the plan. Like, the odds that Falchio would actually come across this girl and actually fucking save her. Because 
again, the king was super shady. He told Falcio when he first met him, he's like, I'll reunite you. I'll reunite you with your dead wife. And Falcio's like, you can't, but okay, fine. And I was like, okay. So the king named the little girl the same name as Falcio's wife, which like comes up when Falcio first sees the girl. That's kind of what convinces him to actually save her. He's like, I know it's irrational. Like, I know she's not my wife, but like hearing that name and she's clearly like this little girl in need. So he's like, fine, I'm going to like save her. So literally because he's kind of a dick. Like he wouldn't have saved this little girl if she hadn't had the same name as his dead wife. So the king basically knew Falcio would be a dick and not give a shit about some random little girl unless she happens to have the name of his dead wife. And then it turns out that she's a fucking princess. And I was just like, what? What is happening? What is this book? Like, what even is this? I don't understand. So... This book, which gets like 4.5 on Goodreads, which was supposed to be my next Lies of Locke Lamora, is garbage. Like, just garbage. I don't even understand. Like, what? How? How? I mean, I understand how this was written. I understand that part. I don't understand why it was so well received. Just major yikes. Such major yikes. Like, and it's not also... No, it would still be badly written because of all those plot holes and twists and whatever and like it's just badly written but like the like the representation of women i wouldn't be good but if this had been written like in tolkien's time they didn't write grim dark fantasy then but you know what i mean like it wouldn't be good but i would get that like it's kind of like the old school style of fantasy where women are not treated super well but this is a pretty new book it looks like 2014 was when it was first published. 2014? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not doing this anymore. Like, I've read older fantasy books that... I think Lies of Locke Lamora came out before that, honestly. I'm not sure about that, so don't quote me on that. But uh, what? What? What is this? I don't understand. Okay, so I'm also super mad because I didn't get to a lot of the books in my TBR in November, and I was... I mean, it's not entirely the fault of this book, but obviously I spent time reading this book, which could have been spent reading some of the other books on my TBR. This wasn't even on my TBR. It was just because I had an Audible credit. So yeah, don't read that book. If you're still watching, don't read it. Or do read it, but like, hey, read it. Because I'm not wrong about this. Like, I defy you to, like, disagree. <laughs> it's so... Witcher! I'm sorry, I think I have bookish Tourette's. Witcher was written way before this. I think it was the Witcher books were written in the 90s and they're Polish. And I'm not saying that like Europeans are more misogynist, but a 90s fantasy written in Poland, I feel like would be much less progressive. So if Witcher had really kind of iffy notions about women, I'd be like, I'm not okay with it, but I get it. But Witcher, which when I film my TBR, it's like mainly Witcher books. It's a little dated in that respect, like a little bit. But overall, honestly, so progressive. So progressive, even for today's standards. So if Andrzej Sapkowski in Poland in the 90s could do this, what the fuck is Sebastian de Castell's problem? Is that his real name? Unlikely. Anyway, um, let me know in the comments down below <laughs> if you've read this book, what you thought of it. If you had planned to read this book, please tell me that I've convinced you not to because don't. It's garbage. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.